alligator snap, vultures lurch, parrots perch, and have you seen the horn on the unicorn? Down at the alphabet zoo. Hi, Ralph. Hello, Duster. Hello. This is the alphabet zoo, the A to Z of the animal world. Hello. And there's Duster the dog. And as everyone knows, the start of the alphabet is the letter A. And even Duster knows that. <laughs> and in Alphabet Zoo, there's an animal with every letter. The animal to go with A could be ant, armadillo, aardvark, or even albatross. But today, to start the series, I've chosen an alligator. Not an alley cat. Shh, don't mention the word cat. No, A is for alligator, and I'm going to tell you about an alligator called Adelaide. She came across something she could never catch, however much she chased it. This is the story of Adelaide the Alligator. Adelaide the Alligator lived in a place called America. To get where Adelaide lived, you went way, way across the ocean, up a muddy river, and headed for the second swamp on the right. All visitors were most welcome, particularly those with large picnic baskets. Being an alligator was a fine thing. You could drift along all day like a log with not a care in the world, except about what was for tea. Or you could blow muddy bubbles through your snout and pretend you were, well, anything you wanted to be. Blowing bubbles was without doubt the thing Adelaide enjoyed most of all. Though in truth, Adelaide knew it upset her mother terribly and made her father absolutely furious. So, she spent more time on the next best thing to blowing bubbles, which was polishing her lovely teeth. There was no doubt about it. Adelaide's rows of teeth were the finest anyone could wish for. Once she'd brushed them with a handy twig, she used to open and shut her mouth slowly and move her head from side to side so that anyone passing could see just how beautiful her teeth were. After all, she used to say, you never know who might be looking. One day, while she was floating slowly downstream, pretending to be a log, out of the corner of one eye, she suddenly noticed a large round object. It was very bright and shiny. Had it just arrived there, or much more importantly, could you eat it? She opened her mouth and snapped at the round object. Immediately, it broke up into little pieces, then disappeared as if it had never been. Adelaide paused. Slowly, the surface of the water calmed down. And as the water became smooth, she saw the bright round blob reappear. I shall have to creep up on it very slowly, she said to herself, knowing how good she could be at creeping up on things. But as Adelaide paddled very, very carefully towards the blob, with her long tail floating straight out behind her, she noticed the blob moving away from her. Not only that, but when she stopped, it stopped too. Why did it move in that way? The whole thing was a great puzzle. On a nearby sandbank, Adelaide saw her Uncle Harfamo. Uncle Harfamo would know the answer to what it was, and whether you could eat it once you got hold of it, she thought. He loved riddles. <clears throat> Pardon me, Uncle, coughed Adelaide politely. Uncle Arthamo lazily opened one eye and looked at the little alligator. Oh, is it tea time already? He yawned. No, said Adelaide. Not just yet. Oh, pity, said Uncle Arthamo, licking his lips. Uncle, continued Adelaide, can you please tell me what this shiny round object is and whether I can eat it? Uncle Arthur Mo opened the other eye and looked at the object that was puzzling Adelaide so much. That, he said after a while, is not what it seems to be. Never mind what it seems to be. Just tell me, oh, please do, exactly what it is and what it tastes like when you catch it. Nobody has ever caught it, so nobody knows, said Arthur Mo who, like all grown-up alligators, never seemed to give a straight answer. Look up in the sky, he commanded his niece. She looked.
everything was exactly as one would expect. All I can see is the sun, she cried, not quite understanding what Uncle Arthur Moe meant. Well, look at yourself in the water, he said with a toothy grin. And tell me how many alligators are there. <gasps> oh, yeah, I see, cried Adelaide, understanding the puzzle at last. There's two of me. It's called a reflection, mumbled Uncle Arthur Moe. The sun is looking at itself in the same way you're looking at yourself. But, cried Adelaide, looking at her reflection proudly, don't you think that my teeth are so much, much better than the sun's? Uncle Arthur blinked an eye, almost as if he was winking at the sun. How that sun manages without such a fine set of teeth, we'll never know, he said. But Adelaide wasn't listening. She was drifting down the creek, happily gazing at herself in her newfound mirror. Looking at oneself in the water is even better than blowing bubbles, she decided, adding afterwards. And such beauty is almost tiring to the eyes. Oh, look at those wonderful alligators. Yeah, it does remind me of looking at these, haven't we? Yes. Look at those two up there. I wonder if you can see, they're both from uh, the same school, Neville Road Junior School in Stockport. And that one's by Martin and that one's by Simon. Hey, can you see? Oh, yes, there's that? a little tick bird. You know, What's I think the what they the do, they, they eat all the little itchy animals that get on the alligator's back. That's right. And stop them scratching. And look at this beautiful one here from that Stella really Rixon. is good. He seems to be sort of scratching his head with his tail, yeah, with his tail doesn't he? That's a wonderful one. Look at the palm trees in the background, Lovely. too. And here's a... Two alligators here from Ethley Lane County School in Bishop Auckland, but we don't know who did them. But there's another little bird on the end. Oh there, yes, and look, he didn't clean his teeth very well, did he? They're all yellow and white. red, no. but he's got lovely spots. Just like white Adelaide, teeth. they're lovely yes. white, shiny teeth. And look at this one. This is fantastic, isn't oh, it? Oh goodness. This is from M. R. Howard and Sons Nursery in Ashton and the Lion, and a lot of work gone in Lots there. Lots of different materials, mm. lace right. and all sorts. Aren't they marvellous? Would you like to see some more? He knows everything When problems troubled Adelaide She always went to him And she asked him the question There was worry in her head And half a mouth blinked half an eye And this is what he said If you blow a bubble Can you catch it in your hand? If you blow a kiss away Where will it land? And you may see a sunbeam or the twinkle in my eye But you'll never catch them no matter how you try, you try, you try Adelaide asked Arthur Mo, can you tell me please I found this shiny object, can you tell me what it is And would it taste nice if I bit it, and why is it coloured red and Arthur Mo gave Arthur shrug, and this is what he said. If you blow a bubble, can you catch it in your hand? If you blow a kiss away, where will it land? And you may see a sunbeam or the twinkle in my eye, but you'll never catch them, no matter how you try, you try, you try. Now half a mo told Adelaide, look up and see the sun. And if you look down again, you'll see another one. And Adelaide could see her face and the teeth inside her head. And half a mo gave half a smile, and this is what he said. 
If you blow a bubble, can you catch it in your hand? If you blow a kiss away, where will it land? And you may see a sunbeam or the twinkle in my eye, but you'll never catch them. No matter how you try, you try, you try, you try, you try. What a lovely life being an alligator, just floating along down the river all day. Yeah, it'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Dust are quite like that. Yeah, I think he's probably gone for a quick he wants float his now, tea. Actually. He wanted his tea. He's got to get some cheese. <laughs> <laughs> he loves cheese. He's mad about cheese and stuff. <laughs> Alphabet Zoo.